today we're gonna uh, try something here at the beginning of the uh, stream. I'm gonna see if when I turn my camera around, if I can use the wide angle shot on my new iPhone. If I can, I'm gonna use that and use my laptop to monitor the chat. So let's see what we can do here. Hello. Let's see. So if I have it that way, I don't know that I can do my uh, wide angle. I don't see the option. So I guess that won't really matter then. Alrighty. Because I think whether I do that one or the other one, it's going to have the same, same view. And I need to hook in my microphone. I was trying all that before I got my microphone, microphone hooked up. So let me get my microphone hooked in and then we'll, uh, we'll start rolling. All right, there we go. How's everybody doing today? Hey, Jeffrey, welcome, welcome. I guess I don't really need the, uh, don't really need the laptop then to monitor chat because I can just do it on my phone. Hey, DJ, how are you? The only other option is that my other camera on the other side of the phone would have uh, better image quality, but I think we're probably fine. Hey, Tina, welcome. And I probably don't need my laptop this close to my wheel anyway, so. <laughs> Be getting it dirty. Oklahoma's here. Hey, Bert. Oh, Christopher. Good. I'm glad, I'm glad the mug arrived safely. John, yeah, I think plates are a lot of people's nemesis. <laughs> Northern California. Welcome, Juliet. Yeah, I'm gonna, uh, I had to be throwing some plates anyway. I have a couple, um, I have a dinnerware set order. Hey, Stu. Welcome from the UK. Hey, David. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I think you know this guy. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. All right, we're going to try to get right to it here because I have a bunch of plates to throw. Let me get my tripod positioned a little better there. Hello, India is in the house, hand in clay. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You're a sculptor, but really interested in throwing. Well, I know lots of people that are that throw pots that are interested in sculpt <laughs> different kinds of sculpt sculpting. But uh, it's it's good to uh, I've actually got two gauges set up here. I was throwing some mugs earlier, and I didn't want to mess up my plate gauge that I already had set. Hey, Ricky, welcome. So I do have my. Uh, I already have my gauge set to where I, because I made some plates uh, a day or two ago and I already had that set, so I didn't mess with that. So I could already have the gauge set where I need it. Um, these plates are, uh, end up being about 10 inches across finished. Um, I have a video on my channel about making this style of plate. This is my newer style of plate that I make now. So, hey John, welcome. So this is going to be dinner plates, and then I'll, I'll make some salad plates if we uh, get to it here in a little bit. Is the the uh, sound sound quality pretty good? I've got my microphone on my boom arm uh, right up above me, so it should be should be should sound well. Thank you, Susan. Thank you, Tina.
So these are two and a half pounds of clay. Hey, Daryl. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's not hot enough here today that I need my air conditioner on either, which helps because that would be a whole lot of background noise. So if anybody else asks uh, during the chat, uh, these are two and a half pounds of clay. I've got maybe uh, 12 to 14 of these dinner plates to make, and then I'm going to make some salad plates, uh, which these normally don't take very long, but uh, with chat, uh, they might take a bit longer than they normally would. <laughs> And I will definitely uh, get the camera moved around at a couple different angles for y'all to see during this as well. I've considered doing a couple of live streams on Instagram, but then I think about, well, <laughs> I only have 5,000 followers on Instagram and I have 16,000 here, so I just figure it's better to do it on, uh, on YouTube. Plus on Instagram, when you do the uh, live videos, everything's reversed, so they haven't figured out a way, I guess, uh, with the way they do their live streams, it would look like I'm left-handed. Not that that's a big problem, but... Uh... Hey David, welcome. Pittsburgh in the house. So that's the plate we're making today. You can low profile plate, a little uh, flat rim there, and then the little foot that I put on the bottom there. I've considered making, uh, start making these plates without that little foot. Um, don't know. Hey Jeffrey, how long have I been, uh, have I been doing pottery? Uh, well, I, uh, it's about, it's getting close to 30 years, I think 28, 29 years, somewhere in there. Yeah, I did make that look a bit easy, but I've uh, I've made a lot of pots, so <laughs> I figure after that long, you should be able to make it look easy. Uh, otherwise, you probably haven't practiced enough, or you probably should find something else to <laughs> do for a career, especially if it's your career. Uh, if it's a hobby, that's definitely understandable. You could try something as a hobby for a lot longer and not be as good at it because you don't put as much time into it. Yeah, as, as I mentioned, the last live stream I did, just uh, maybe last week or a week before probably, I uh, had been staying away from live streams for a little bit, um, mainly because my <laughs> internet in my shop here was so poor, and when I got my new phone, it had worse cell phone signal, uh, so uh, I would try to do a live stream on my cell phone signal, and then that wouldn't really work well, so and now I have new Wi-Fi. Uh, set up and it uh, have a an extender right here in my workshop and so I can hopefully get good signal right here in my shop for you guys to have good video and audio put these two on my rack over here I'll come back and check on the chat Yeah, uh, I'm brave for throwing and live chatting. Well, I uh, for a long time, 
shops that I would work at uh, when I worked for other people, I um, would throw while people would watch, and so I kind of got used to it. Um, hey, Jan, welcome from London. Uh, let's see, do I trim a foot ring? Margaret, no, actually these will just dry on the bat. And then, uh, uh, let's see, I can go grab one. Uh, let's see, here, I'll grab a... This is a uh, salad plate that has been bisfired. Same design. And you can see there the little foot ring that I threw on that. I left that little foot ring just like that. And then when it pops off the bat, it has a nice smooth bottom. I sign it and then I just run a knife around that edge to smooth up that edge right there. And then I'll bisfire it, glaze it, and glaze fire it, and then I'll sand the bottoms when they're done just to get any roughness off the bottom when they're finished. But that's that's what they look like, just bisfired. All right, let's see. Hey, Patty, welcome. Uh, I'm not sure how thick the plates are. Um, probably, uh, I don't know, maybe a quarter inch thick. They're, I mean, maybe a little thicker than you would make your normal pot just to make them a little more durable. Hey, Sam, welcome from Tallahassee. Oh, Jeffrey, yeah, you're watching the Great Pottery Throwdown. I have never watched that, but uh, I'm, sure it's, I'm sure it's fine. I'm not a fan of reality television, and I'm assuming that's probably a bit of that. <laughs> Do I use the same clay body for everything? I use a different clay body for wood firing than for gas firing. Um, I, uh, I use a uh, Hestia from High Water in my gas kiln, and I use a clay from Starworks, their Oka Medium, uh, in my wood kiln. They're both high temperature clays, and I could probably use uh, the Hestia in my wood kiln. And I have made, I've done a few pieces in it, uh, but working with the Oka Medium in my gas kiln, I have had problems with um, some blisters in the glaze uh, or pinholes. And it's just a, it's mainly probably just a clay and glaze uh, uh, combination issue, and I could probably adjust my firing to fix that but haven't worked on it and I have clays that are working in each so I just and since they're both high temperature clays uh, it doesn't really bother me to switch between them in my pug mill uh, and I just get a little bit of blending when I switch between the two John that is the million dollar question where do I get my bats I can't tell you how many times I've been asked that question <laughs> and uh, I, these were made by a, a local uh, person and I, they have since quit making them and I don't know where they got the material and I have hunted to find the same material and I cannot find it. So, um, eventually, I will either get a definitive answer that they don't make it anymore or I'll find the product. But it's like a quarter inch thick masonite is what I've always called it or hardboard, I guess it might be called nowadays. Um, you can find eighth inch that is smooth on one side, but I have not found quarter inch that is smooth on both sides like this is. So, it's probably still made somewhere. Just depends if it's close enough to be accessible and what the price would be. And I like to have it smooth on both sides so that way I can, if you just throw on one side of a bat all the time, um, eventually that bat will most likely warp in one direction and it would not be good for, especially if you're leaving pots to dry on the bat as I do. Um, I like to be able to flip the bats um, if I see it, each time I use it, if I see it's got a little bit of a warp one way or the other, I'll flip it the other way and uh, just to help keep them straight. All right, I'll do one more at this angle and then we'll, uh, we'll switch angles here. Let's 
see. About how many pounds go into each plate? These are two and a half pounds, Norman. Yeah, David, I have not started making for the next wood firing yet. Uh, and uh, Alexa, uh, how wide is the plate? Um, I think these are about 11 and a half inches wide now that are wet. And I don't necessarily think there's a standard size for dinner plates. Um, but uh, these end up being about 10 inches wide finished. Um, in making these, I was more concerned about the shape of the plate than I was the size uh, in which I could make this shape any size, but um, the shape I wanted a low profile plate that would stack well uh, when you have multiple plates stacked upon each other, so one of the reasons I ended up on this design was for those reasons. I had made plates for years and years for other potters and a lot of those plates, they, they looked good, but they just didn't stack well and they didn't fit in a dishwasher well. And so, a few of those things that I wanted to correct and still make a plate that I thought looked nice. All right, let's get uh, get you guys moved to another angle so that you can see. Maybe we'll just bring you down right in here. Tall's outside wall before making the rim. I have to measure. I don't really know. I've still got some store-bought dishes, Brock, <laughs> from our wedding. Um, hey, Tracy, I, uh, how much do I sell a set for? I just sell them individually. Um, dinner plates go uh, for about $40 a piece. And then uh, salad plates, uh, 32 and then I do cereal bowls and coffee mugs. It just all depends on what somebody wants in a set. All right, let's see. Any other chat that I missed here? Oh, Patty, good job on that. Uh, yeah, John, if you find any, definitely let me know. Uh, Tina, I don't cone up when I throw, um, uh, let's see, I'll talk about that in a second, and then, um, the larger plates, uh, mine, uh, Luann, uh, I don't, I've never had a problem with plates slumping, I think if you trimmed them too much, uh, I don't trim mine, but if you trimmed them too much, you could have a problem with that, um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, you've seen you never seen my wheel this dirty. <laughs> yeah, I've been uh, I've been trying to get some pots made lately for sure because I had our wood firing and then uh, uh, had my online sale for the wood firing. At, well, after I did my in person sale, I had the online sale and then I have to make some work for some orders for my gas kiln 
and then I also have another online sale in June, the beginning of June, and then also the beginning of July is our next wood firing. So yeah, there's a, there's a lot on the schedule right now. Um, as far as coning the clay up and down, I uh, that's more of a centering uh, technique and uh, and and or wheel wedging, uh, energizing the clay. People say it's all different reasons that you would do it. Uh, most people do it to try to help center the clay, uh, I think, and, and that or uh, to kind of wheel wedge it as far as like getting it more homogenous while it's on the wheel. Uh, this clay uh, I've run through, I've pulled out of, uh, out of the bag um, and then ran it through my pug mill uh, to get it homogenous that way. So I, it helps a whole lot in the centering and throwing process by doing that. Um, before I make the, uh, let's see, what did I do with my ruler? I was going to measure how tall that was before I laid the lip over. Uh, it's only about in close to an inch and a half. But that's not as, as critical to me as, uh, as just getting it to my gauge uh, out there. So I kind of just throw it to whatever height I think I need to eventually get it to the gauge. And then I'm trying to get that nice smooth curve inside there that goes down to the flat part of the plate. This is a really tricky shape for me to to get you guys low enough to see what I do on the underside of the plate because it just doesn't, uh, it's just really hard to see. Um, I might could lower the, uh, might could lower the tripod a little bit and then zoom in. We'll do that in a minute. Yeah, most people would set, would cone up the clay to, uh, like I said, at this point, uh, to get it centered. Um, I've always felt that that was just an extra step that, you know, by the time I cone it up and then have to push it back down, then um, if I can get it centered without doing that, then it's already in the shape that I actually need it to be uh, without having to go through all that extra work and steps. And that probably came out of my production background. Working production in pottery, you know, I always tried to figure out <laughs> the fastest way to make everything. Uh, and still make it quality. I didn't want to like sacrifice quality by making it quickly, but I was being paid, you know, per pound or per piece. And the more efficient I worked, the quicker I could be done and go home with the same amount of money. So <laughs> I learned a lot of that in that time frame just by kind of in a way being forced to do it uh, so I could be productive. And it all depends on who's teaching you, because if some if the person teaching you how to throw cones up and down, then most likely they're going to say, "Hey, you need to do this to center it." And you know, anytime I've taught lessons to anybody, I've I've basically told them, "Hey, listen, there are <laughs> as many potters as there are. There's that many ways that you could center and throw a pot, and not that there are some tips that I could give somebody, but I'm not going to be able to tell you specifically how it's going to work best for you." Let's see. <laughs> uh, let's see. Do I have many failures warped, etc.? No, I don't. Thankfully, uh, Carol, I don't have many uh, warp pots or failures, but that it does happen. So, regarding the Masonite hardboard, you may, you may be able to get it at your big box hardware store. Yeah, I have tried, uh, Daryl, and most of them, the ones that I have talked to, I've called uh, Lowe's, Home Depot, 84 Lumber. Every single one of them have told me that uh, 
it's either not available or they can't get it. So, yeah. I've tried. Like I said, it fits out there. I just don't know where yet. And I have enough bats at this moment that I don't have to find any. Um, but I think if anybody does find it, uh, they could... <laughs> I definitely would love to know where it is and uh, find somebody to uh, make some bats for me and maybe even to make them for other people. Uh, Tina, uh, how long do I dry my plates and do I cover them with plastic? No, I, I don't. And it really, it probably, that all depends on the weather uh, here or where you live. Um, if you have really dry air, um, you may want to cover them so that they don't dry too fast. Uh, any any piece of pottery, of course, and anything that has this wide of a bottom, yes, if you dried it too fast, you could have problems. Um, but uh, if I was worried about them drying too fast, I, uh, I put most of these plates on a rack that I have that has adjustable shelves, and uh, I just put them down low, and, and between the boards that are on there, they kind of protect them from getting too much air circulation. Um, and if I was worried about it, I'd actually just cover the whole rack with plastic. I wouldn't cover the plates individually or whatever. But I, I next to never do that. <laughs> so uh, I, I don't remember the last time I covered plates, put it that way. I'm more apt to cover something like one of my big platter bowls than I would a plate. Um... Just from experience, I've had issues with those cracking before uh, if they're dried too fast, uh, more so than a plate. All right, after I do this one, we'll try to uh, see if maybe I can get you guys a little lower in, on an angle to see what my hand's doing underneath the, uh, the rim of the plate. I only have uh, six more clay balls. Ooh, this one's feeling a little stiff. It must have been. I had some clay balls that were sitting in there for a few days, and I had them covered, but this one might not have been covered the best. When do I wire them off the bat? Uh, Bridget, I actually don't. I just let them dry on the bat because I don't trim them. Uh, don't trim a foot in my plates. They're thrown thin enough that they don't need to be trimmed. And uh, when they dry on the bat with these really nice smooth bats I have, they'll end up with a really nice smooth bottom on them. Hey Adam, you're very welcome. Thanks for being here. I have a video on my YouTube channel about uh, the fact that I let my pots dry on the bats and I talk a lot about how I do that and how I handle the pieces coming off the bats. I think a lot of people that work in smaller studios or work in art centers where they may not have a lot of bats or you may have to conserve space, a lot of those you may have to wire things off uh, because of that. Or if you are going to trim a foot on something, yeah, you can't let it dry on the bat. It'll be too dry to trim by the time it releases from the bat if you're going to trim it. Yeah, Garrett, they'll just release from the bat once they're dry enough. But if the bats are not in good condition, if they're kind of fuzzy or if they're, you know, kind of fibrous, uh, they will kind of stick a bit more. Uh, you can do this with masonite or with plastic bats. I've, I've definitely done it with plastic bats before and the, and the clay will release. Hey Aaron, these are two and a half pounds of clay for these plates. And if I was going to trim them, yes, I would have to throw with definitely more clay. I'm using exactly what I need for them to be finished like this. Um, I've just taught myself how to do that. And then uh, 
Um, I showed this earlier, but here's a uh, a salad plate that has been uh, dried on the bat. This one has been bisfired, but uh, you can see the bottom of it there, and how smooth that is, just from drying on the bat. I'm going to try to get you guys a little lower so you can see how to do that foot ring. Maybe even bring you over on this side of the uh, of the wheel. My water bucket. All right, let's see. If we do this that and what if we do this there we go all right we'll see if this will work and then uh uh aaron do i sand the bottoms post bis firing i do not actually i uh I found out that if I sand them when they're greenware or when they're bisque, when they come out of the glaze, I still have to sand them again because it's uh, some of that fine material is, is being condensed or lost in that process of, of, of finishing, that they're still rough coming out of the glaze firing no matter if I have sanded them in greenware or bisque. So I just wait and, and sand the bottoms when they come out of the, uh, out of the glaze. Hopefully this uh, may help answer some questions about that foot. So I'm just making a pancake and then I leave the, the outside edge a little bit thicker than the, uh, than the inside. And then I'm going to take my rib and I'm going to push up under the edge here to lift that up initially. And then kind of squeeze together between my hand and the rib a little bit to kind of pull that. Gonna clean some of that excess clay off around the bottom. Now what I'm gonna do is, is actually take the rib. Uh, Adam, you know, these are these are plates for my gas kiln. Um, I haven't attempted plates in my wood firing yet, but uh, I'm definitely working on a design that would be very similar to this, but it would have to be thicker for my wood kiln. For the wood, for the uh, for the uh, foot ring uh, ring that it's on there, I'm actually gonna lift the 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 rib up off the bat a little bit and then push in, and that's gonna kind of leave some clay protruding out right there at the base and then I'm gonna have my left hand back here behind it to kind of smooth it and then put the rib in front the rib will get the underside cleaned up and then my finger behind the rib kind of smooths down the top of that little foot ring and then I'm gonna clean it off with my sponge before I lay over the rim No, they're 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 not very heavy and not very thick. I could uh, I could weigh one for you. Actually, I've got some over here that are finished.
throw this one more and then I'll I'll weigh one of those uh, weigh one of those other ones that I have finished. Having nice flat shelves is the key to making nice plates as well because if you put a plate on a warped shelf, you're going to end up with a warped plate, I about guarantee it. So that's one thing about making plates. I have uh, some nice advancer shelves for my gas kiln. That's one of the main reasons I do my, all my dinnerware currently in my gas kiln. Let's see here, let's zing you guys back out. Let me get to a couple of the questions you got here. Uh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> mystery bats. Uh, Rhea, uh, does the screwdriver mess up the edge of the bats? Uh, no, I try really hard to make sure that when I, I don't jam the screwdriver in there, I try to just get it in there and just kind of wiggle underneath it because I'm very protective over my bats. And the same reason I use wood ribs and I don't use metal ones is because it would mess up the, the wood bats or the... Uh... Yeah, that, uh, that foot ring definitely takes some practice, but it is, uh, it is amazing to do. Let's see, or to... Uh... To have that let's see I'm gonna weigh a plate here for you guys All right, we have one uh, one point like nine six pounds. It's like one pound fifteen point four ounces, or uh, I think it was a uh, what was it in, kil in grams? It says eight hundred and eighty eight grams. So depending on what uh, what uh, system you use for measuring, there you go. So hey Seth, welcome. Yeah, Brad. Uh, yeah, you could mess up a wheel head uh, with a screwdriver, but I'm also careful with that. Um, yeah, if you probably look closely, there's, there's right there. There's a, that side of the screw, uh, the bat pin, and that side is scratched up with with my from my screwdriver. But yeah, I'm not I'm not that rough on it. Yeah, uh, Brock, that was probably when I was zoomed in. Uh, it probably was grainy from that. All right, let's see. Let's get this up higher from this angle. And maybe we'll try to get one from over here. Uh, let's see. 
and then we'll zoom in a bit here. There we go. We'll try that one. Yeah, Brock, it's like I said, if it, I'm using my front facing camera on my phone, and then also if I've zoomed in like that, it's probably a, a, a bit grainy just from the, uh, I guess, digital zoom that's, uh, that it's doing to get in that close. Yeah, no, uh, no, you know, thousands of dollars worth of camera equipment in this studio. I mean, my phone, you know, it's not cheap, but it's not, uh, it's not professional grade uh, camera. Yeah, Seth, I'm making plates today. Yeah, my videos, I definitely, I use the rear facing camera. I don't use the front facing camera. And then uh, I, I never you really use the zoom feature on any of those. Um, I might in post edit some clips to change the, the, the zoom on it a little bit to, uh, to help with either focusing in on something or just changing the look of a, of a clip. Helps keep people's attention, I think, if you change the framing a little bit. Uh, Seth, yeah, I, well, yeah, you were here the other day, I told you, I got that dinnerware set to make as well as to, uh, finish the pieces of yours. Not making another one, though. Yeah, when I go to that edge of that bat, I just kind of wiggle underneath it. I try not to jam it in there. So, you can see, that's where I hit it. But I never pull anything all the way to the edge of these uh, bats anyway. I don't like to have anything that I throw that goes over the bat pins if I can help it. Uh, because that's a place that it could definitely crack very easily by having the bottom of a piece go over those bat pins.
All right, I think I have one more clay ball for a dinner plate, and then we're going to move to some salad plates. And I can show you how I set up my gauge and everything from the beginning. Let me just clean up around my wheel here a little bit. I constantly do that. <laughs> Probably a little OCD, but uh, I like having a clean wheel uh, workspace around my wheel and cleaning my tools off. So I will show you, um, this is the rack that I'm uh, putting the plates on. So somebody asked earlier about that. You can see how sh uh, short the shelves are. Uh, they're just probably spaced out about two inches, those little uh, brackets. And so that's what I'm using for, for setting that up. All right, let's see. Is that zoomed out? Zoom in a little bit. There we go. Let's see, what else have we talked about here that I missed? Oh, Berlin, Germany is here. Welcome, welcome. Well, not the city, but somebody from Berlin. You guys know that. Why do I throw 90 degrees to the pug direction rather than the same axis with the pugged clay? Chris, that is an amazing question. And you're very observant. And there's a very important reason, actually. Uh, from my experience... Um, Anytime clay is pugged, uh, and when it comes out of the pug mill, uh, the clay, well, I've cut these so it's hard to see, but when, I, when it's going through the pug mill, it's actually rotating this way in the pug mill when it's blending it together. So it's doing a circular motion. If you've ever mixed two different clays in a pug mill, you would actually have seen that. And with the pug mill doing that, if I actually throw the clay ball down this way, there's a good chance that I will get S cracks in the bottom of my pieces because that clay will want to unwind or separate in that same manner that it was swirled together in the pug mill. And so by throwing the clay ball down this way, I'm actually compressing that swirl together uh, instead of actually allowing it to have that vertical surface to separate. You could probably throw it down this way and just compress the snot out of it and maybe try to get it to you know compress and all be together. But uh, I found that if I do it this way, I don't have to spend a whole lot of time compressing the clay either, and I never have cracking issues. So, um, yeah, I actually recently had a couple pieces that cracked, and it's funny because I cut the clay out of the bag, and I didn't wedge it. It was just for, like, uh, some little three-quarter pound jars, and I had a couple of them that cracked on the bottom, and I'm like, I guarantee you it's because... You know, even though it was pugged in a square, you know, the end of the tube was square, but that still has that circular motion because the auger inside that pug mill is spiraling the clay this way. And then I cut it off the block and I threw it down this way, you know, and then it just, it cracked in the process. So, yep, that is why. So very good question. I'm glad you asked. Um, let's see. It's a mustard well, huh? Uh, I never heard of that. Never heard of that. Let's see. Uh, yeah, uh, Seth, <laughs> how can the people on YouTube order a dinnerware set for me? Uh, they just have to email and ask questions about ordering a set. So, <laughs> Thanks, Adam. Yeah, you're welcome, and have a good day if you're leaving. Um, Uh, so if we wedge, you should throw it down flat. Yeah, anytime that I wedged clay, I did ram's head wedging. And uh, when I would finish that wedging, I would still, because it was spiraled this way when I would wedge, I would make that round and then I would, you know, so if I was wedging, I would have been wedging like this, you know, and then I would have, have rolled it to get it round this way and then I probably would have flattened it like this and then I would still pick it up and throw it down this way because I had wedged it, you know, 
this way and I don't want to throw the clay ball down this way because the spiral of my wedge would have been like this. So I always still threw my clay balls down this way even when I wedged. Thankfully, I don't have to wedge anymore because of my pug mill. But, uh, you know, I, I know there's lots of different ways of wedging. And actually, I've heard people say that uh, um, the spiral wedging, that you can throw that down with the, uh, with the coil this way. But that's probably because it's been spiral wedged and not ram head wedged. And that spiral wedge, doesn't, it doesn't make a perfect circle when you're wedging like this. It's got that you know, spiral wedge to it. So that's, that's my assumption. I don't, I don't wedge, uh, and I've never spiral wedged. So, uh, yeah, I, I've never, I, I've never, uh, really, uh, I've seen cut wedging before and, uh, yeah, there's, like I said, several different ways, but I've never tried that myself. No. This is another clay ball. It's a little stiff, but it'll be all right. Out oh, for uh, I just I still pug all my clay for uh, for anything I'm throwing, and uh, now when I'm throwing really large pieces, I usually center. In multiple sections, I'll center like five pounds and then I'll throw another five pounds on top. And when I throw the first five pounds down, I'm throwing it down sideways like you just saw. But then the next one I throw on, I actually will throw the other way because that is not going to be the bottom of the piece. And so that where it uh, connects to the bat is not, it's not going to, uh, that piece I throw on top to center with the bottom five pounds is not going to be the base of the piece. So I don't worry about it with that one. If that makes sense. I've talked about that before as well. I don't know on what video, but I have talked about it. All right, I think that's my last clay ball for dinner plate. And now we're gonna make some salad plates. Danielle and my little niece just walked in, so she's clapping for me. <laughs> Wanna say hi? Uh-oh, she's grabbing <laughs> tools. <laughs> hey there, what you doing? I bet you want to put your hands in there, don't you? <laughs> so on the uh, salad plates, uh, I have measurements written down uh, for some pieces like this that I remake over and over again. So I have a notebook over here. Um, so I make my salad plates uh, nine, uh, a little over nine, like nine and an eighth by about an inch tall. So um, what I'll do is I'll just throw the first one and I'll get that size right, and then I'll show you how I set my gauge to the edge of that uh, after I get the first one made. Let's see, let's get this right in there like that. All right, so and for my, uh, I'm gonna throw my sal Oops, I'm gonna throw my salad plates on the square bats instead of the round ones. Um, just because I don't need to take up as much space with the round ones and I don't have as many round bats as I do square ones. And these only being uh, a little over nine inches wide. Hi there, Harry. Welcome. Like I said, these are a pound and a half. The dinner plates are two and a half pounds. I do need to grab my ruler. All right, 
let's see. So right now, that's almost nine inches there. So I'm already about the width I need to be. Of course, I've got to go up with it and then out. Basically doing the same steps, just with less clay. Let's see, before I get to shaping this too much, let me see what I got. I got, uh, yeah, nine and an eighth, and I got about an inch, so that's about perfect right there. All right, so then I'll just pull, I'll just pinch on my clamp here and then pull the uh, pull the skewer out to the edge and I get it fairly close, probably within an eighth or a quarter of an inch to the edge of the plate. So that gives me my height and my width measured in one stick there. All right, let me uh, uh, put another shelf on my cart over here and I'll look at the chest. All right, let's see, what do we... Here, there's several several chat messages, let me... Uh, oh, I think we're zoomed in, there we go. Uh, let's see, have you ever made marbled clay plates? Uh, no, I have not, I have not done anything with marbled clay at all, apologize, that's not anything I'm familiar with or have done. <clears throat> yeah, Brock, that's exactly right. So when I throw the second piece on top, it doesn't reach the bottom. Yep. Uh, Noreen, uh, do you think? Do I think Danielle would want to start doing pottery? She already, actually already knows how, and she has done some. We had the same high school uh, art and pottery teacher, and uh, she has done some jewelry. But uh, I don't know when she gets. Uh, when they get a little older, she might want to do some more. I don't know. I'm going to leave that totally up to her. I'm not, just like my kids, I'm going to encourage them, but I'm not going to push them. And they're going to decide what they want to do. <clears throat> uh, Tina sa says, I do ram's head wedging and then pound into a sphere. By the time I throw, I don't know which way it was going. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Th I definitely, yeah, definitely be more aware. Or if you, uh, Tina, I'll give you a tip. Uh, if you want to make it round, if you have something this shape, after you finish wedging and then you flatten it, you, instead of making it a perfect sphere, you could just round these edges like this. So you don't still don't have a perfect sphere, but you have rounded edges that aren't going to be as hard when you center. Um, or you know maybe uh, you know if if you continue to work on those to make it round, just remember to work on one side at a time, and then maybe maybe put an X you know or something like that, and you know okay well. That, that side needs to go down, and then before you throw that down, you could just smooth off that X and then throw that side down. Something like that could help you out and not lose track of, of which side is, uh, is wedged the way you want it. All right, let's see. <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely people center different than, uh, I mean, everybody centers different. Uh, let's see. Oh, Harry, the shrinkage rate on this clay, I believe, is uh, about 12.5%. You tried the X, but still forgot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you got to remember, uh, if you're going to put the X on there, uh, which one is which. I stole your package. <clears throat> All right, here we go. We're going to now start uh, throwing the uh, salad plates here. It's 
So yeah, the one that I rounded, of course, is going to be a little easier on the hands to center because it's not going to have those sharp edges. Um, but that's another thing that I just didn't, I don't take the time to do anymore. And that probably stems from my production background is I'm not going to stand here around all the edges of my clay balls when that doesn't really speed me up enough to make it worthwhile. Um, and I can just kind of force that clay to be smooth around the edge. But if you're beginning, yes, yeah, make it, yeah, my, my pottery art teacher in high school, he's like, why are you not rounding those edges? You know, you need to give yourself every advantage you can when you're starting to make it easier on you. And so that is definitely one thing that uh, can make it easier on you in the beginning is to, yeah, get the clay ball nice and round so that it's easier. Uh, it's more in the shape of what it's going to be when it is centered. But after a while, you should be able to do that without having to round all the clay balls, if you choose to. Definitely con continue to round them if you want to, doesn't matter. things that I'll uh, maybe zoom in here and talk about is is how I do the inside shape um, because that's something that that I do that I think it's pretty uh, it's not unique but uh, the way that I do it uh, is interesting when I when I finish pulling up that wall and I lay over the rim I actually take my finger on the inside and I'm actually like supporting it and I just kind of push down on the inside and, and I smooth that uh, uh, smooth that rim going down into the uh, bottom of the plate. Just something that I developed after kind of working on this, this uh, design of this plate for a while. And I love using the heel of my hand to open the to clay ball so I just push down with that heel of my hand because it's nice and flat and stronger than other parts of my hand and then uh, use it to open the clay ball for plates as well all right so after I've got it pulled up I'm gonna make my foot clean off any extra water around the outside edge because once I lay this over it'll be hard to get back up under there and now when I make uh, the lip all right so now here's where I'm gonna take and I'm actually gonna hold it just like this and I'm gonna push down with this finger as it's spinning and, and kind of smooth that so now I got that nice curve going from the side wall to the bottom of the plate and I don't have like a harsh line there from the side to the bottom. that up a little bit so you can see that a little better this time.
Hopefully that uh, angle is helping you guys. And then I'll uh, I'll do one more uh, uh, after we do this next one, and I can put another board in my rack over here. We'll move to back to the other side and show you the uh, underside. Hey there, welcome, Weave Weaver. <laughs> Well, Noreen, you're very welcome. Thank you for being here, and I'm glad to be able to help. I know the live streams are, are a bit different, but I think they're uh, I think they're equally as beneficial because otherwise you don't get to ask questions, and I I don't get to I can't really take the time and answer all the questions and comments on a on a on a YouTube video. I just uh, I can't spend that much of my time reading comments and, and, and at least replying to them. I read most of them, at least for now. Um, but, uh, yeah, I really just can't spend that much time going through comments and responding. All right, we'll get you guys back on this side, and we'll go over that uh, that foot ring uh, one more time here. There we go. All right, let me look at the comments. Uh, hey, Brock, I'm glad to hear they help. Uh, DJ, yeah, the, is there a benefit to having softer or harder clay when throwing plates? I. I prefer softer clay when throwing plates because they're not a, a difficult form to make anyway and you don't have to have stiff clay for them to stand up so I like softer clay because it makes it easier to throw for me. Uh, I, If I was throwing plates out of stiff clay I'd be upset because I'm like man this could be an easy task and I'm making it harder by having to have stiff clay. Uh, Tina, do I have to... Um wedge small lumps say under two pounds no actually I, I uh, uh, didn't wedge any of these these are a pound and a half I have different dies that I put on the end of my pug mill so that if I want smaller clay balls I still pug it and I just cut them by length to smaller amounts uh, let's see hey Tyler uh, my day's going well thank you for asking uh, Oh yeah, uh, how do I keep the bottom width? That's a great question as well. How do I keep the bottom width consistent? That one is, is just by practice. Um, I don't have a gauge set, of course, for the width of the base of the plate. Um, and those are gonna vary a little bit, um, but it's mainly just by practice and having uh, consistent throwing technique. Uh, 
that that I'll be able to have the uh, width of the base be the same. I've been asked that uh, before um, on different pieces, uh, and it's really just all by by habit and by having, like I said, consistent motions that I do and consistent uh, techniques over and over again that you can get uh, get a consistent size to the base of your pieces as well. Now, you know, if there's something you need to gauge to get it the same size, you know, for like lids or a, a piece that has to be a certain size, you know, you can definitely could gauge them, but this I'm just trying to make sure that it kind of part of the design of this plate and why they work so well is because of the the way the base is small enough that it fits inside the plate uh, that it's sitting on top of to make them stack well. Yeah, if I had uh, if I had the full barcode there, there's the product. <laughs> I believe it's tempered something, <laughs> and there's part of the barcode. Both barcode made in the USA, quarter inch. We were talking about the bats earlier. Yeah, I just need the other one that has the other half of that on it. You know, <laughs> maybe I'll set this one aside. Maybe I can find it. Maybe I used it already today. I don't know. I'm sure it's a square bat because uh, that one's a square one and the guy that was making these probably all cut them out of the same sheet. Um, I never thought about that before, but scan that barcode with uh, my phone and see if it comes up with anything. Let me get my light in a better position and I'll explain this foot uh, this foot ring one more time here. Alright, let's see, I saw a couple comments there. Oh, just one. Uh, Debbie, um, no, I actually, yeah, I, I, uh, she asked, is there a certain product I use for keeping my hands from drying out? I have become fond of, uh, uh, I think it's made by O'Keefe's. Um, uh, I can't remember the name of it now. It's, uh, oh, here's another part of the, uh, label, but it doesn't have the barcode. It just has the made. That's seven something. That's part of the barcode is seven. Oh, sorry. So that was probably, uh, well, I don't know if that was that same label or not, but 
No, because the maid is there. So that was another label. Whoops. There goes the bat. Alright, so let's see. Uh, what I'm doing with the uh, foot there is after I get it pulled up to the height, I'm going to take my rib back down to the base. I'm going to lift it up a little bit off the wheel head and then push in. And that's going to leave some of that clay protruding out right at the base. And that leaves that clay there that I can then smooth and, and clean up for the uh, foot ring. And I'm just going to put my left hand in here, my, my middle finger there to smooth the top of that foot ring. And then I'm going to bring some water in and then use my pointy part of my rib to do the underside of that foot and then clean that off and then I have a nice rounded foot at the base of the piece there. I do that foot on a lot of pieces. It's probably a little overkill to do it on my plates but uh, and I've considered trying to not do that on a plate and make it a little bit easier uh, and they may even stack even better if I don't do that. So, if I do wood-fired plates, I probably won't have that little foot ring because uh, I'll need to make them a little bit thicker anyways. Oops, sorry. All right, let's see here. Let me get you guys at a different angle. Yeah, definitely, uh, Daryl. I I, uh, I really like having a leg set on my wheel. Um, uh, I throw probably maybe half of what I throw standing up, and then the other half sitting. Um, just trying to get the. Uh, really high up here. Oh, there's some pieces that I made in high school back there. <laughs> there we go. Get you guys up above a little bit. Uh, uh, v. Hoffman, yes I do. Uh, he asked if, uh, if I leave them on the bat to dry, and yes I do. Um, it's okay. Yeah, you, uh, I know there's usually multiple questions, the same multiples of the same question that happen in a live stream because not everybody's here for the whole thing.
Uh, sorry, I missed that. Do you have to turn off or are they already ready? Uh, don't know what that means. Uh, do, you mean, do I have to trim them? No. If that's what you're asking, I don't have to trim them. Hey, welcome. Another person from India. There was somebody here earlier who was also from India. Now, when these dry on the bat, they are ready to go. They don't have to be trimmed. Um, I just I just run a, a knife around the edge uh, to smooth up the edge. Um, yeah, there you go. That's what I figured. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't trim them. I just uh, smooth up, smooth around that bottom edge where they have been. Uh, where they release from the bat. All right, I have like, uh, let's see, five more of these and then, uh, Maybe we'll do uh, one piece of something different to end the live stream. Uh, so, would you guys start taking a taking a poll of what you'd like to see me make, and then uh, by the time I finish these, I wish there was a way. I, there, <laughs> wish there was a way I could do a poll on here. That'd be cool. There might be, but I don't. Of course, I'd have to input what to vote on. So. Yeah, this, uh, with these small ones, I know y'all can't see a whole lot as far as what I'm doing with my hands, but, uh, and it gets a bit repetitive because these are fairly quick to throw, and at least for me, I understand they may not be for everybody, but, uh, for me, they're fairly quick to throw, and, but that's, that's kind of the, my background in production, that's what I learned was to, uh, How to make my steps of making anything concise and don't waste any movements or time or uh, one of the reasons I use very few tools is because I, I don't want to have to like hunt around and look for tools that I need to do a certain design if I can just get it all done with just a, a rib and a sponge then that's better off for my timing. Make myself amazed to have to walk around over here <laughs> just to get to my rack to put the plates up. <laughs> here, let's zoom this out a little bit. There we go. All right, let's see. Oh, goodness, we got a lot of... All right, platter bowl. Cup with a funny face. No, there's not enough time for that. Sorry about that. Uh, chip and dip bowl and platter. Large bowl, bowl, platter bowl. Uh... Bowls. Hey, you made it to the live. Welcome. Yes. My preferred sponge. Um, I've been buying the uh, uh, their uh, a masonry sponge from Lowe's Hardware. Um, something plus. I can't remember. Here's here's the. Uh, let's see. Armley uh, Armally Pro Plus. That's what I've been buying. Um, and then uh, somebody recently brought me one from, uh, uh, let's see, Ace Hardware, which is a really nice one as well. It, it kind of, it feels like it has a really good quality to it. It looks very similar, uh, a little bit different color, but just even initially getting wet, it feels like it has good, uh, 
good absorbency and, and feels good as far as like quality of it. <laughs> yeah, I don't use natural sponges, although they, they work. Uh, they get a bit flat quickly. All right, three more uh, dinner bowl soup or cereal. Let's see, yeah, I'll, I'll probably take. I've got, uh, I have some clay pugged out over here, but it's not much. There might be, uh, there might be five or six pounds over here. I could either do uh, one large bowl or do a couple medium-sized bowls. Um, Uh, yeah, Daryl, do I ever catch my fingers on the corner of the bats? Not really anymore, but, uh, and they're not that bad, even if I do hit them, but, yeah, if you were to hit it in a bad direction or with your fingernail, yes, that would be bad. So if you're going to use square bats, that's definitely something to get used to and have to watch out for. Uh, you just definitely have to be aware that they're there. <laughs> Something you don't have to worry about if you use round bats, for sure. these on. I got two more clay balls. Alright, two more clay balls and then maybe we'll put all that clay together and make, uh, make a large bowl. Um, maybe I'll show you how I would center two clay balls. Uh, like we talked about earlier, where I center the first one, throwing the clay ball down sideways, and then the next one I can put down the other way on top. And that'll just be one, one piece here at the end, a large bowl. I usually throw my large platter bowls at my sit-down wheel. Um, don't necessarily know why, I've just enjoyed making them and I feel like I have a little bit more stability to make them that way. Um, so maybe we'll make a bit more of a serving bowl, something that's uh, not quite as wide or not quite as shallow. A bit deeper and not quite as wide. Alright, and we're at 91 minutes here too, so not bad to get all these plates done in that amount of time. Like I said, definitely would have been faster if I wasn't live streaming, but that's alright. That's uh, 
like to be able to have you guys on here and show you more of the process and uh, be able to answer questions. All right, let me get this on the rack and then uh, move the camera and get the clip. Let's see. Let me check on the comments here. Have I ever stabbed your piece with a screwdriver? Yes, Brooke, Brock, I have uh, I have slipped up with that screwdriver and put a hole right through the pot. That's not fun, but... Uh, uh, Nina, uh, standing up actually is not that hard on my back. It's probably harder on my back and my butt to sit down in front of. Uh, I leave them, uh, I do not wire them off, uh, I let them uh, dry on the bat. Um, hey Richard, these, I uh, uh, want to know how much these weighed, these were a pound and a half, these uh, salad plates that I was making. Uh, Weave Weaver, the S-Cracks, I talked about that a minute ago, um, as far as the way they throw the clay ball down on the wheel. Um, there's could be several reasons, but... Uh, Let's see. Yeah, I don't really compress the clay. Yeah, here, I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. Let me get this clay ready. Alrighty, here we'll talk real quick before I finish, uh, before I do this one. Uh, let's see, uh, the S cracks in the bottoms, um, those uh, can come from a lot of reasons, but I, I've noticed, uh, I talked about earlier, if you go back and watch the live stream, I talked about the way you throw the clay ball down versus this way versus flattening it and then throwing the clay ball down this way. If it's coming out of a pug mill, which most clay does, even if it comes from a big manufacturer, it may come at, it may come to you in a square, you know, looking thing. But it's, that's just the end of the pug mill. It still has an auger in it that's turning the clay, uh, making it uh, spiraled in a certain direction. And so throwing the clay ball down a uh, a certain way will help uh, reduce s cracks. Um, I don't compress the bottom a whole lot, but that's because of the way I'm throwing the clay ball down. I just know that I can. I can do that, and it's not gonna. I'm not gonna get s cracks in the bottom. So, all right, Murfreesboro, Tennessee. I've been past there before, or been through there. Don't know which. I can't remember now. It's been several years, but anyway. So here we get. We have um, that one's seven inches. So that's three and a half pounds, and that one's seven uh, seven and a half. So we have about seven. Uh, I guess about seven to seven and a half pounds of clay here. So, so I'm going to use a round bat for this one. Get you guys back down here so you can see. 
So what I would do, I'll take the uh, the larger one of the two. I am gonna flatten it. I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of compress both of them down. I'm gonna do it over here on my table. I just took the tall piece and then just squished it down to compress it down. This one being, uh, like I said, about three and a half pounds. I am going to round the edges on this one to make it a little bit easier. If I get up to this size, I usually do that. And then I'm still going to throw this clay ball down this way uh, because it, it came out of the pug mill this way, which means the spirals are going this way and I, want, I don't want to throw it down this way. This one I'll center on top of this one. This one I can throw down this way because this is not going to be the bottom of the piece. This one here will be, and none of this clay here, even though it's spiraled this way, will not become the bottom of the bowl, <clears throat> if that makes sense. All right, so what I would do to center one clay ball on top of the other is after I get this bottom one centered, I'm going to round the top of this clay ball off, even use my rib to give it a nice slope so that when I throw this next one on top, I don't trap any air between the two clay balls. And then I would also want to take this one, I'm just going to round it a little bit on my other bat that's sitting here just to give me a rounded shape on it as well. And throw that on top. Now you can see that's not centered, but the bottom is, and by throwing that on there, I didn't really knock the bottom off center. So now I'm pretty much just centering this top three pounds. And if I wanted to, I could cone this up and then back down, but I still really don't do that that much even for this. I just kind of cone it a little bit to blend those two together. But by having the base already centered, all I have to really do is center that top piece. And by the base already being centered, it helps a lot with that process. What I like to do with most bowls is pull the bowl into a straight V to begin with, whether that's tall or wide, and then shape it after that. Because having that V allows me to get, uh, it kind of still has some like structural integrity to the piece while I still continue to uh, pull the weight out of the bottom. If you go ahead and put the shape in it before, then you're you're losing some of that structural integrity by already having the curve in it while you're still trying to pull it. And I'll usually pull it taller than I want it eventually as well, or skinnier, not as wide, so that uh, I can always take the clay and go out with it a lot easier than back in.
I'm making that same foot on this one. I did it a little bit different because I was the way I pulled it, there was extra clay at the bottom that was already curved out. Now I just kind of already used that clay the same way I would have if I would have uh, done it on the plate, except I didn't have to use my rib raised up off the wheel because that clay was already sticking out there. Now I'm going to use my rib down just above that foot ring and start shaping from there. One of the things I learned uh, to do is shape in reverse. Um, I don't really have to do this one that way, but just to show you guys, I'll show you how I do that. Um, I'm gonna get my rubber rib over here. Come around this side. I learned this from my friend Ron Philbeck uh, as far as shaping in reverse because I can use my rib and my dominant hand on the inside of the wheel which helps uh, by applying pressure with my right hand which is my dominant hand on the inside which is normally on the outside of the pot. So I'm going to start out by just adding some water to the outside so that my left hand as I'm shaping from the inside can glide on, on the clay on the outside. I could use a rib in my left hand as well, but it's actually easier. I like to have the feel of the clay. Now I'm going to put my wheel in reverse, and then I can start shaping from the inside with my rib in my right hand. And it takes a little bit getting used to, but not as much as I thought it would have to do this because um, once you're on the inside, you're having the same motions as being over here because of the spin of the, the, the wheel. Um, and then, uh, like I said, then I can get that nice curve on the inside of the bowl. I'll probably go ahead and lay the lip over on this one as well. And then put a swirl on the bottom. There we go. Now we can uh, measure. Well, this ruler starts at 18, but still. 
So we have almost 18 inches, 17 and a half inches across. And yeah, height. Yeah, we're looking at about five and a half inches tall, something like that. All right, well, there we have it. That's, uh, let's see, we got 107 minutes in here. So, how much would that sell for, Tina? Well, that probably depends on how well it turns out. I've learned uh, that I don't just price things by size. Um, I price them by how well they turn out, and uh, that's yet to be known, right? <laughs> so, um, but... Uh, that size is probably going to be at least, I don't know, yeah, I, I, I don't know until I'm done. <laughs> at least $200, probably more. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, uh, there's, uh, let's see, there wasn't that many, um, at what point do your hands say enough yet, yeah, Debbie? Uh, yeah, that, that happens. It doesn't happen nearly as much as it used to because I don't throw nearly as much as I used to. Um, but, uh, Jennifer, you're very welcome. Um. I'm glad you guys are here. I'm glad you learned something. I'm glad it helps. Um, one thing I love about having uh, this avenue to uh, to share with you guys is that, yeah, is is I know there are lots of things that I could probably help you guys with, even though I'm not there in person. So eventually, I would like to uh, come to different places and do some workshops, but we gotta uh, figure that out, and we gotta get you know COVID out, uh, <laughs> yeah, under control in some sense before that's going to be possible as well. So, Because I'll have to come to an art center somewhere that has a bunch of wheels, but that'd be a lot of fun for me. So anyway, uh, thank you guys as always for your support on all of my videos on social media. Um, if you haven't, you can subscribe before you go. I do a video probably at least once a week, if not a live stream. And then um, I have uh, Instagram, Facebook. I, do, I use that, but only really because it's connected to my Instagram. Um, and, uh, yeah, if you guys, uh, have any questions, feel free to, uh, uh, leave a comment. Also, I have on my website, I have all the details of my in-person, uh, kiln opening sales here. I'm open by appointment and, uh, for my kiln opening sales, which they're all announced on my website. My next online sale will be, uh, June 11th, and that will be predominantly, um, gas-fired work. I'm going to fire my gas kiln, uh, at least once between now and then, if not twice, and uh, some of the pieces uh, that I've made recently will be uh, on that sale on my website, matthewkellypottery.com. So you can check that out. All my information's there if you need anything. So, all right. Thank you guys. And uh, hope you guys have a great day. And uh, yeah, see you guys soon. Appreciate you.